funny it hurts so funny it hurts aching hit struck aggravated impaired suffering agonized lacerated tendered battered marred and tortured bleeding mauled wrapped and bruised and miffed and whining and buffeted and nicked and busted and confused and offended in pain and crushed and pain indignant and slut and picked and damaged and scared resentful distressed and sad and stricken and shot and shook so funny it hurts <laughs> oh my god that was that might have chase that might have to be the theme song i don't know what kind of money we have to offer you here but that was the best Welcome to So Funny It Hurts. I'm your host, Michaela Gordon, where we talk to our favorite comedians and explore the trauma that made them that way. I'm so excited about our guest today because I know her, I love her, but truly, after becoming a TikTok star, she has used her voice for not only women's rights, but LGBTQ rights. She's causing a storm. She's here with us today, Sarah Hesteros. <laughs> First of all, I like that I'm causing a storm. You Love are that. Listen, put you that on are. my gravestone. She's causing a storm. Mm. I I think you are because you have been, and this is this is what makes me laugh. I don't. Do you, you, are you a part of the LGBTQ community? No, I'm not. No, just a no, strong ally. Sure. Yeah. So what I love ally. is that we always say for us, like we just want good allies. Mm -hmm. You know, like we'll fight the fight, but we need good allies. You have been really, because you have 2.3 million followers on TikTok. I do, yeah. Over 200,000 followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Your platform is major. I do. I have, I'm, I, I've, I was the right place, right time kind of thing. Like during the pandemic, I got on TikTok and because I lost my gig, like everybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I just had all this time and all this like, built up creative I, I needed to do something yeah and it just kind of took off and it's so crazy because I had been trying to do my comedy on social media for years and it never found an audience and just TikTok was it for me listen you found the audience it, I, yeah, I want to yeah. talk about sort of how that happened but I will say you have you're very um political in the sense that people it's not yeah. not political like that yeah, yeah. like you're protecting our lesbian community, our trans community, women's rights, and you're fearless. And it's been so inspired. It actually gives me goosebumps. I, I feel like it's so inspiring for so many women to watch you like just fucking behead these people and be like, I don't give a fuck. This is what I'm talking about. And then to do it through your comedy and music. It's crazy. It, I, I, <sighs> It's so interesting because I don't want to be political, mostly because I'm not educated enough in politics to mm -hmm. have like a political conversation. Mm -hmm. I, at the end of the day, it's like this, it, it's just human rights. It, is it wrong? Then don't do it. Well, like, what's crazy is, is human is, rights is political. Like, I know. That. Like, I imagine know. that. Yeah. Me wanting to love who I love is a political issue. I know. And it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be political. It shouldn't be a, a topic of conversation at all for anybody who's not involved. Yeah. You know? And it's just, um, yeah, I, I, I try to stray away from politics in general, but it's so hard these days. It's so hard, especially when I do stuff like Florida Man and and everything that's going in Florida, and I'm from Florida. Uh, it's so embarrassing. but And it's so frustrating because I'm not embarrassed being from Florida. I love Florida. Yeah, I consider myself a Floridian, born and raised there. I love it. It's beautiful. I miss it all the time. I miss the green. I miss the people that and the relationships that I've cultivated since I've birth. But seeing what's going on now, it's just like, oh no, Florida. Yeah, listen to me. Florida, what are you doing? 
doing? Florida is going off. They're having, Florida is having its moment. Ronnie is just doing his thang, honey. Yikes. Um, but Florida Man Friday is mm. kind of what started getting you viral on yes. TikTok. So mm-hmm. what? So let's set the scene. It was 2020. Yep. We were all struggling because I remember this clear as day. Mm-hmm. I was doing Melania and Trump with John D. Domenico, who we love. Loved it. You were doing the music and the comedy. Mm-hmm. And then Florida Man Friday started blowing up. Yeah. So Florida Man is a, is not new. It's not a new concept. It's like early 2000s. They uh, Florida has this law. It's called the Sunshine State Law where everything is public. Like nothing, any criminal act is public information. You can look it up anywhere. So people started putting their birthdays and the word Florida man into like a Google search of some sort and up pops a incredibly crazy yet very true story about something a Florida man did and is probably in jail for. And uh, so I have always known about that being from Florida. It was a very popular meme. And I just started putting him in a song and people tend to dig it because so, the <laughs> stories were crazy yeah yeah they're, and you they're, really put it into song they're massively insane what my, was you want my favorite yeah. okay my favorite story florida man is in october and it it i i'm a little i'm a libra so um okay libra no. when's your birthday seventh okay my mom's the 19th Oh, she, that, Libra. she's a Libra. Libra. I have no idea what any of that means, it except means I hurt my own feelings. I know that that's <laughs> what Libras do. Everything else, and stars, you, moons, suns, waves, I don't know. That's it. You I don't, that's all things. I know. I do. On the regular. I hurt a my true own feelings. artist. <laughs> so it is October. I can't remember the exact, maybe October 30th, where a guy... Uh, maybe I could play it. For play you. it. If play us Florida. Man. Okay, so I asked. Oh, is Sarah, it too soon? No, absolutely not. I will listen to me. I feel like it's so incredible how you are able to do comedy with your piano. Um, and I wanted you to do a couple of things here today. So we're going to start with Florida Man Friday. What no, actually not. made you go viral? Okay. This is your favorite story this from is. October. This is. My I also love that you're from Florida. So when people try to come for you, you're like, "Bitch, I'm from Florida." Yeah, you so can't. Don't. You can't come for me. Sorry. I can say it. It's not racist. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like one of those things. Okay. So um, so I always start out with it's Florida Man Friday. You can't make the shit up. People seem to like that. They love it. So, um, on this day, October 30th, a Florida man wanted to go to a Halloween party and take his girlfriend, but she did not want to go. This made Florida man real mad, so he shoved her to the ground and held her there, making punching motions. None of the motions of punching made contact with the woman because he was wearing an inflatable T-Rex costume. (laughs) Did you ever know that you're a hero? And behind me, you can see a T-Rex inflatable costume. (laughs) And it's, you're everything I would like to be in those tiny little arms. <laughs> yes is that story not ridiculous wait that's so fucking stupid and then it's documented oh yeah and there's actually a picture i wonder if i can google it but there's a picture of the man in handcuffs in the, not the tiny hands the tiny hands <laughs> yes the tiny I hands hate florida okay, florida man um t-rex costume handcuffs sure why not um and it's this easy and i will never oh i'm not online ah barf okay i'll have chase pull it up yeah what am i working on can you please google this is what he gets paid to do this This is what he gets paid babe can you please google to uh t-rex florida man t-rex handcuffs 
I just want to say that when Chase, I say that I talk to Chase every single episode and every single episode I say, Chase, you are so wildly talented and deserve the world. And I'm sorry that I make you Google crazy ass shit. I think I just found it. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I've got it. I've got it here. I've got it here. Okay. Show us. Stop. Yeah. This Um, can't be real. Yeah. Uh, If it, it'll be in this. Oh my God. Stop. Yeah. And that's stop. And that's the best. <laughs> Why would he arrest him like that? What was going on with the Florida cop? Because I mean, <laughs> I mean, he couldn't get to his arms. And that's why the, the girl was safe. Safe at home in her bed. Yeah. Because of the T-Rex costume. God bless the T-Rex costume. God bless it. Okay, anyway. so what was the first uh video that went viral with Florida Man Friday? Mm. That's a good question. I think it was the guy who uh, got drunk on a lawnmower and um, decided to drive down to the grocery store and he hit a cop car. I think that was the first one that went viral. That was the first one I ever did. Stop. I think so. I don't know. I've done I've done a lot. So I yeah. did I did one every single Friday for two years. And then halfway through the first year, I added Florida Woman Wednesday because equal rights. Thank you. Women are just Thank as stupid. Thank you so much. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm a true feminist. Wait, I do want to touch on that because I feel like some people, when they try to come for you, obviously not of your fan base, they're like, well, you're just a man hater. Oh, sure. And because you have songs like uh, Stop Giving Men Microphones, mm-hmm. you've got merch. Yes. And I, I love do. it. I love and it. And so it's very easy for people <laughs> to, un, in a very uneducated way, attack you. About that. Yeah, it, it does happen a lot. Uh, and uh, of like, I mean, that's feminism in general. They don't, if you're, if you don't understand what true feminism is, which is equality overall and, and <laughs> it's so simple, but people just keep like, oh, you're a feminist, you hate men. It's like, Honestly, that's why I'm an angry feminist because I have to repeat myself over and over again. Like, yeah. I don't hate men. I just don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. And I mean, I, I do it so much. I say it over and over again. Then fi- finally, I'm like, all right, I hate men. Sure. Yeah. And they're like, well, what about your dad? Especially my dad. <laughs> Where do you think this trauma came yeah! from? Why do you think I'm doing comedy? Damn! So. Why did he do this? Uh, do you uh, do you have a good relationship with your parents? Like, how did it start? Truly, let's go back to the beginning. Girl. How'd you start being funny, girl? Ugh. Do we have to talk about my parents? No, we don't. We no, can no, talk no. about whatever you want. Um, well, okay. So my dad just passed away a year ago. And he was a funny Jew. He was just a funny Jew and he wasn't funny for, he wasn't a comedian. He wasn't, he was just funny. And I, he was super sarcastic, which is where I got my sarcasm from and dripping with it. It's, it was like basically our love language is like, how sarcastic can we be with each other? Which drove my mom crazy because my mom is this cute little, uh, Southern Baptist bell heart on her sleeve and don't ever pick at her because she will cry for days uh-huh. and so it was like she she it drove her nuts but my dad and I had love that, language had that bond um so I and I guess a lot of my comedy chops come from my sense of sarcasm of just like oh yeah this is awesome I love being fearful for my life when I walk out to the garage at night just because I have tits and an ass like it's awesome yeah so you know I think that's where a lot of my comedy comes from and it's and it's also very frustrating because I don't have a lot of fluff material which can be hard to do a a tight 10 you know when i'm just walking into the club and i'm like men suck and they're like fuck girl calm down (laughs) like but this is all i have to talk about 
is all I have to talk about. Okay, wait, but this is crazy because you're Jewish. I am. Your mother's Southern Baptist. Yes. So uh, I grew up in a household. My dad uh, was Jewish, born and raised with a, a Jewish mom, Jewish dad. Uh, he was never religious. So when he met my mom, he just converted to Christianity and it wasn't a big deal. Um, and so I grew up in a Christian home. And we did celebrate Hanukkah and Passover, but just because, you know. Yeah. I didn't, I wasn't raised being told I was Jewish. I knew my dad was Jewish. And then um, I actually was married uh, very young um, to a Jewish man. And that's when I kind of got into more of my Jewish roots and understanding, you know, the the bloodline is and the difference between being Jewish religiously and Jewish uh, by blood and stuff like that. And I actually kept kosher for seven wow. years. Oh yeah, I, I, I we were wow. we were like hardcore like Jews for a while. Yeah, and then we got divorced, and then and then you weren't. You were just and then regular I too. Shrimp again. Oh, was like. I lost a husband and I gained shrimp. It's fair. <laughs> That's a fair trade. Listen, I love that. My dad's Jewish. My mother's Italian. So we were raised in a Catholic household. Yeah. Um, but I always have tried to have the perfect balance of understanding my Jewish culture the same way I do my Italian culture. And I do think that Jewish people are inherently just funnier. They what well, It is. I was just talking. I'm working on a bit about this, about how... Um, <laughs> Because there were Germans uh, came into the bar the other night, and G Germans are lovely people. I'm like by no means I'm being like oh Germans, but they do. They're very. Um, uh, they are known for not having a very wide sense of humor. Yeah, and so I was. <laughs> I don't, you might want to cut this. I'm like, We're not cutting shit. But, uh, like it's the the idea that because of the Holocaust, like Jews got all of the humor and Germans got none. Like. <laughs> I don't know how I can work this into a bit of some sort, but I find Wait. it hilarious. But honestly, that's where my brain went. I was like, how could Germans laugh at a time like this in 2023? They, can't. they, can't they really, they, they have to no. suffer now the way they made our people suffer. I think that's perfect. I, I love it. I, I think like a lot of people's comedy, be it stand up, be it musical, always stems from a lot of truth. Yeah. And I think that that's when people say, well, I'm offended by you. Do you hit them back with, but this is my truth? Like, it, because I feel like you're a very honest, authentic comic. Well, I do try to stick to topics that I know. Like, I'm not going to go into black comedy because I'm not black and I'm no. not a woman of color. And I don't, so I... And I think it's irresponsible to do that, especially when there are so many wonderful uh, POC comedians out there. Why would I talk about that when it's not my it's not my topic? Right. I I will be an ally to it and be beside you, but it's not it's not my business. And TikTok has helped me with that. Like um, I follow this. I don't I don't know her name, but she like talks about staying out of black women's business, and I'm like. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. What's the lesson? I mean, th the lesson is the idea that let them talk. Let them talk about their business. I don't need to talk about their business. No. I'm, I don't know anything about their business because I'm white. Right. And I have so much privilege of that, that I just need to listen and give them their platform to talk and to speak. So in the sense of like me talking about feminists and and issues of being scared of men walking and like so tired of men talking about women's business, I can relate to that. I know what it feels like. So, and that trauma has turned into me being sarcastic in comedy about it. Yeah. I feel like a lot of women appreciate you so much. And I feel like you talk about topics that have always been taboo. You um, have a song that you wrote about not wanting kids. Yes. And I saw a lot of the comments are a lot of women, mothers even. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That say, listen, I love my kids, but you're right. They're fucking hard. I didn't know it was an option. Because again, growing up religiously, you court, you get married, virgins, and... A virgin. I don't. I don't know what a yeah. virgin. I was a virgin when I got married. 
10 out of 10, 10, out of 10 do not recommend. Um, <laughs> no, you Oh, weren't. yeah. Fuck. We were both virgins. We courted. We did the damn thing. Okay, so well, let's break this down because mm-hmm. it's so um, interesting because you're so... So now I am like sex all, like let's talk about it. Right. Because, and I don't, I don't blame my parents. I blame religion. <laughs> Sorry uh, to anyone who's very religious because I do believe in God. I believe that there is a truth, but I believe that r- religion itself is so... So, well, um, listen, honey, you're saying it to the right crowd. Like religion says I'm wrong for loving Lisa. Like I get, I love God too. It's, it, I don't it, like all the rules put upon and us. And now I can't think of the word, uh, oh, fuck. I, I get lost in my words sometimes. That's why I put them to music. So I, when talking, I, <laughs> I remember lyrics over just words, but yeah. it's so, ar- religion is so arrogant because at the end of the day, it's like, I have this faith. And if you don't agree with me, you're wrong. I'm right. Yeah. And it's like, wow, I'm not going to say you're wrong because I'm not arrogant enough to know everything. I don't know what it is. I have my own truth. I have my own faith and belief, but I'm never going to tell anybody else that they're wrong in their faith. Right. Except when their faith is saying that person is a demon that person is mentally ill that person is not uh, glorifying god because of this this and this and this yeah and listen i appreciate it i think that it speaks to a community being a part of and i hate to go back to this because i don't want this to be the whole thing but you know it is it, it you know we're told especially in multiple religions that like you're going to hell and mm-hmm. it's like okay babe but like I don't need all that. Like, my God doesn't believe that. Mm-hmm. And also, it's 2023. If this isn't hell, I don't know what is. I, Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we are well, in then it, I babe. see you there. We're honey. in it. <laughs> Great. You got a ticket right next to me, babe. Okay. <laughs> Grab your Bible. Let's go. Like, enough. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. we appreciate that. Um, going back to the kids, having that conversation, I think a lot of women, I haven't had kids yet. I'm 35. I may not until. Year, even year, more years from now, God, like God willing, if my yeah, body yeah. will produce, I was actually terrified to have children. No one ever had the conversation with me if I could or I couldn't. And then being a woman with another woman, it's like we didn't talk about it. But there's not a lot of conversation growing up that you can make that a choice. Oh, because it wasn't a choice. Mm-hmm. It's just what you did. And, and people – and then – If you didn't, you were looked down and was sad. Oh, I'm so sad for you because one reason or another, usually it was health, health Mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Um, And the idea that this whole, it's what, I'm fascinated by the fact that us as women from the time we have our first uh, period cycle, our bodies are literally made to make other humans. Like that whole process yeah. of our periods and our ovulation. I am fascinated by it. That's probably one of the only reasons I still believe in a God. Because how? How? Mm-hmm. How does that just like happen? You know? I believe that it doesn't just happen. I think there is someone or uh, some woman, probably a uh, mother of nature of creation and blah, blah, blah. So I do, I, I'm fascinated by it. I have no, no reason to be a part of it <laughs> personally. Um, uh, would you play a little bit of your song? If, if you don't mind, cause you are at the piano of, of yeah. not wanting kids. Also, I just want to say, she's saying, I don't want to have kids on mother's day. <laughs> and the mothers that were in the audience were literally applauding. Like women were like, I love my kids. I believe it. Also, so your decision. Mm-hmm. It's it's incredible how supportive women really are of each other. I agree. I agree. And and you know, it's so funny because I when I wrote that song, I was prepared. I was prepared for a lot of like throwback and like people like hating like, oh, mothers get sh- mothers get shit on so much. Mm-hmm. Like 
Um, I just posted a video about this guy talking about women and blah, blah, blah. And the comments of people like his mother did not raise him right. Do not blame his mother. Are you kidding me? That is so patriarch. That is so, oh, a man does something shitty and we blame his mom? Fuck all the way off. Like That's I'm just, such a good point, though. I, I, do, I didn't even think of that until you said that right it's, now. It's so patriarchal. And it's, it, I mean, and, and so anytime women even have the hint of like misogyny in them, because women can, women can be misogynist. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's the patriarchy that has been ingrained in them. And this is when I get in trouble because I'm talking like, like, it's just, there's no getting out of it at this point. It's just causing awareness of like starting a conversation because our society is so ingrained in the patriarch that we can't get away from it. So when I when I wrote this song, I was prepared for mothers because they get shit on so much for everything. Yeah. They get shit on from their kids. They get shit on from their partners. They get shit on from society. They get shat on all the time. So I was really hoping that people would see this as a child-free voice and not hating mom's voice. Yeah, I love Does that. that. Make sense? Listen to me, I'm an aunt and I'll take my niece and nephew and I sometimes can't wait to take them home. Yeah. It's exhausting. Because they're terrible. But not... Kids are dicks. They're, they're but I will say my niece is the best. She's a good kid. They, she's exhausting. Mm -hmm. They require a lot of attention. They require, like, you have to explain things to them and, and show them, which is all great. All to say, moms deserve everything. They do. Because my sister is a phenomenal mother. She lets my niece tell her the same story 58 times a day and acts like it's the first time she's heard it. I mean, you're really yeah. applauding mothers in the song i i think so I, I heard it like that i and i hope that it does come out like that because i i do and y then you get, even get into the fact of like uh, parents blame themselves all the time when their kids do dumb things and or something happen and they grow into adults that are just shitty people and stuff like that and people are gonna be who they it's a scientific fact that people are going to be who they are, whether they are raised a certain way or not. I know that trauma experiences seep into that, but like personalities are just who we are. Yeah. Like no, absolutely no way would any anyone believe that I was raised by my mother. We are like night and day people. And so it's just to blame the parents for people I mean, things, unless negligence, obviously, yeah. like abuse and stuff yeah. like that. That is different. I'm not talking about that. That is a whole nother set of discussions, which some people shouldn't be parents. Yeah. But that's the other conversation, I think. Like, you know, stop forcing people to be parents. Not everyone's supposed to be a parent. Mm -hmm. They can actually cause more damage than they do good. And that's my trauma. And they have. Mm -hmm. And they have, and they will continue to if we st if we keep pushing the narrative that it's important for us to ever, for people to be parents and bore children and raise humans. Yeah, just because our bodies can do it doesn't mean we should. And it's just like that's a lesson in everything. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Anyway, and I love that. Um, okay, do you want to turn? I, I I do want to turn the focus a little bit because I I'm obsessed with the the song that you wrote, um, Jack Black, the the sound that you made for Jack Black. Oh my gosh! And I didn't know we were going to talk about that. Uh, we're what talking about everything. You don't have to play anything. I just want to talk about it because that video went viral on all social media platforms. Uh huh. Jack Black, 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 I love you. Oh my God. It was Jack Black I don't know. The video went viral. Everywhere. Everywhere. I got millions and millions of views everywhere. And what did people say? What What was the thought process when you made it? No, I saw the Peaches video yeah. and I was like, I'm a fan of Jack Black. 
mostly because he had a uh, tenacious D is he, he is one of those musical comedians that is not a musical comedian. He's like legit musician. Yeah. And the two of them together, like make and create some amazing music, but it, there's always this hint of comedy at, behind it, which I respect and which is ultimately what I'm trying to do. So I, I'm a huge I'm doing. fan. I'm a huge fan. Uh, well, it's it. You're doing it, so just receive that. It's hard, but he didn't. He didn't do stand up. Like like what I'm what I'm getting into, trying to get my music out there. I'm going more the stand up route which I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but I'm doing it. So I'm trying it at least. Um, so what- I, I, I'm going to say it again. I think the 2.3 million followers on TikTok agree that you should be doing that. Oh, yeah. oh so, sorry. I'm chewing eyes in the microphone. First of all, we're a home here. <laughs> a dysfunctional one, but we are a home. It's, Chase, I, I do you do like ASMR? it? ASMR? Yeah, do it. Hold on. Okay, Chase, get your ears ready. I'm trying to find Chase a nice girlfriend if you know anyone. I'm putting those. I'm putting that ice on my nipples right now. I, Everyone I, I is turned on. I think we just got like ten more subscribers. I think, um, yeah, at least. Okay. At least. I will say, like, mouth sounds make me incredibly. That's like my autism showing. I don't know that, like, my... I could listen to those videos all day long. Stop. You oh. love it. Oh, I it's love like them. They're all over me. TikTok, and I love them so much. Stop. Especially when the girls do this with their nails. Okay, I love the nails. I don't know what it. Okay, do can you hear it with the nails? I can get behind the nails. Yeah. Oh, you like that? I love it. Oh, you fucking like that? <laughs> oh, yeah, you love that. You want some more, Chase? You <laughs> love the nails. How will fucking nail <laughs> <laughs> That took a dark turn. <laughs> That's why I don't do it. I'm so awkward. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm struggling no, right now. there's someone out there. There's someone out there no. that will pay. Listen. Pay. Tens of cents for that. I'm telling you, I'm trying to start a new set right now where I didn't have a relationship with my dad for years, but now we're in therapy and we're doing great. And oh, I love, I love him. I'm so grateful. I, oh, I really that's want so to. Lovely. I, yeah, thank you so much. I missed my dad. I'm very grateful to have him. But Lisa's kink, which I was so happy to do, we've been together eight years, was daddy. And I'd be like, yeah, daddy. Yeah, mm. fucking love you, daddy. Okay, I, whatever. That's so well, yummy. in Italian culture, you also call your father daddy, even if he's a fucking loser. <laughs> and now I've made up with him. And so I'm like, hey, daddy. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so now I'm like, how do I navigate daddy lisa and then my father like it's i'm struggling I'm i, su- need a I support therapy. women i love when women period but i cannot get behind grown women calling their father daddy i can't listen we just made up can i, I ju- can not <laughs> it just it's it's the, it, you. It, it like my my vagina just dries <laughs> immediately and i'm like <laughs> And I can't, I can't. It's so gross. But me, but I call, I, I, I like daddy. Because you use it I as like, a kink. Mm, I like daddy kink. So you, okay, listen to me. I like it. Uh, someone help me here, okay? Because I'm stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I, well, just call him dad. It's, it's a, it's a cultural thing. And now I'm, it's been 35 years of this. Even when I was, even when I was like, you're a fucking what? deadbeat. Daddy! Now I know, I know, oh, I'm so old. You're uh, not old. But I'm, I'm like in TikTok and it's embar- It's so embarrassing. And I love it. Zaddy is a thing. Zaddy. It, Zaddy is a older daddy. Listen to me. I don't fucking know. What babe. I'm saying is, I, why well, don't you just call her, start calling her Zaddy. I could. Instead of daddy. But it's already imprinted in my mind. I didn't talk. It's It's, already out there. It's done. You can't unring that bell. I had eight years with Daddy Lisa, and now my father wants to be in my life as Dad, Daddy Rocco Gordon. And I'm like, I, this is such a mind fuck. I have to, you know what? I have to stop talking to him again. It's just, I have to, it's over. He's causing more trauma. Yeah. Um, It's too much. Okay. So wait, I love this. (laughs) I love that that's a king for you too. Daddy. Oh, I love, well. My uh, for your or for your man. My boyfriend is older than me. He's fifteen years older than me. Love, and uh, um, yeah. I just uh, when we 
started becoming intimate, I just went for it. And he seemed to like it. And now I don't know if he likes it anymore. <laughs> we don't talk about it. I just do it. We should communicate. You more. should listen. Maybe you should ask him then. Communicate. Listen, daddy. Okay. I, but I love that you do because going from a virgin who got married, I say that with love. That was like a virgin who got no. it's something like clueless when she's like, you're a virgin who can't drive. Babe, it's um, my story. Like, uh, but I, I love can't, it. I can't change it. It is what it is. But to have you start there and then truly be a voice for women. I mean, vibrators are a girl's best mm. friend is the greatest I wanted to bring vibrators, actually, and I just remember that right now. Oh, and I damn, did you should have told me. I've got a plethora. I wish I would have. Because with my music video that I put out, I just like went to the store and like bought uh, because I wanted all my dancers to be dancing. Yes! With the Chase, like that. do we have any vibrators here? I've got a couple in my car. Yeah. Go get them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to me that that's where you started and now you're so sexually free. Talk about it. Empower women to be. It's probably because of the trauma yeah. that I. it was so, again, and, and I hate that it always ends up back here for me, but it's my religious trauma that I grew up in a religious atmosphere that sex was dirty and inappropriate until you were married and then it's like go do everything do and be good at it and make sure you please your husband really well and don't ask for anything and don't talk about it to other people if you're having issues because that is inappropriate that's private between you two but also be really good at it and please your husband so he doesn't want anything else from anybody else and i'm like Yeah, that sounds like a fucking How does dream. that make sense? Make make sense. But it really is for so many people you don't know. And then, you know, I think what we talk about a lot is the only examples we have, if you even bother, is watching porn. And they're flipping their weaves around and they're in positions. Oh, they're beautiful. That you, they're beautiful. And the women come in like that. And they have beautiful vaginas uh -huh. and they're just beautiful, beautifuling. Oh, yeah. But I don't look like that. No. And I'm tired, honestly. My back hurts. <laughs> My lower back, I don't know what's going on. I turned 35. I can't wear the six inch heels anymore. My knee hurt. Like they're, we're struggling. So I just need people to be real about that. I know. I know. Well, I, again, I am very open about sexuality and I like to talk about it because I think the, the taboo life of sex is over. It should be over mm -hmm. because sex is not dirty. And even if you do believe in religion that the there's a, a daddy, have a cloud daddy in the sky, and he made sex then. He did that. Yeah. He did it for us. And we're supposed to enjoy it. And and obviously there are responsibilities that goes along with that. But how do you know about those responsibilities if you don't talk about it? Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? So it's just like, it, people people get chastised for being a slut and a whore and it's just like why why who 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 started this yeah religion that's who i'll tell you that i i completely agree and i think that this whole waiting until marriage not test driving the car and all of that's bullshit well it's I, it's dangerous mm -hmm. it's very dangerous and uh i i adore my ex-husband, um, we were married at a very young age. We were both virgins. We had no idea what we were doing and we weren't compatible. Yeah. We were best friends. That's why we lasted seven years. Yeah. Be and also because divorce is not allowed or it's a, like, uh-uh, no, no. Yeah. God doesn't love divorce. You made a commitment and blah, blah, blah. Um, a, but... If we had had sex before we were married, maybe we wouldn't have that now in our hearts. The fact that we are divorced and we're used goods or whatever. Yeah, <clears throat> used goods. On that note, will you play me a little bit of Vibrators or a Girl's oh, Best Friend? Oh, I will delight, lady. <laughs> Love it. The intro makes me laugh. Okay. <laughs> in the in the recording, I do it a little sexier. I can't no. say, but um, a kiss 
on the hand may be quite continental, but vibrators are a girl's best friend. Yes, it is, honey. A partner is great, but they won't always get you to that oh god place or help you find your oh face. Love is great, but it's a fact. Sometimes they don't know where your G spot is. It's true <laughs> and sad. <laughs> Poor men. <laughs> Poor men! Uh, they have it so hard. <laughs> Poor men. Yeah. <clears throat> Whether big and black or small or fast, <laughs> these cocks always will ask. Vibrators are a girl's best friend. I don't mean dildos. Those are very different. <laughs> One you gotta put in the dishwasher to clean. The other you just wipe down with a toilet every once in a while. Plug in some batteries and have a good time. Vibrator AM, a, 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 ASMR. Oh like my God. Do you, can you Google it, Chase? Is there a vibrator <laughs> ASMR? That it, might definitely come up as porn. I think that like will, 100%. Will be porn. Oh, that would will be, be porn. Will be porn. Yeah. You'll just put your little vibrator here. I know, right? I just Zzz. make, yeah. Zzz. On my recording, I couldn't, because um, I end it with a vibrator sound going out, and I could not get my vibrator to hit the note that I wanted. And okay, so goodbye. I, can't I just even... did it myself. I went. <laughs> I just want to say. So that's me. But they one more recording. time. This bitch said, I could not get my vibrator to hit the note I needed I it, it to. I'm going to get it. So I, wanted, I did it. I wanted a C. I wanted a solid C <laughs> and I couldn't find a vibrator to do it. Okay, let's switch it up because <laughs> I was on the internet the other day. A friend of mine sent me a video and I was watching the video. It was Carrie Washington. Oh, yeah. And I was listening to the sound and I go, I know her. I love this. This is when Sarah Hester Ross. Your videos have blown up. Who, My audios blow up a lot. The audios blow up. Mm -hmm. Who has been one of your favorite celebrities that totally took you off guard that did your sound? Uh, there have been a few. I have a terrible memory. I don't know. I can't think. I can't think of. I mean, Carrie Washington was Carrie Washington's most huge. Recent, and she is huge. Yeah, I loved Olivia Pope. Scandal was one of my favorite shows. So when she did that, um, but first she didn't do it first. Um, Orlando, not Bloom Brown. Brown. Orla Orlando Brown did it first. Yeah, and he didn't use he. He reposted it so the sound was under him. And it was this whole thing. Oh, People thought it was no. him singing. And Wait, they thought the voice was Orlando Brown's voice? Yes, they did. It's so clearly you. But, but also so clearly a woman. But, I mean, I don't know. I, it, it was kind of funny to me. I've never heard him sing before, so maybe he does have a high voice. But I literally, to this day, I still have people coming to that video being like, I swore it was Orlando Brown. I swore up and down. And there, there, were, there, was, the, there was this woman who on my Instagram was like under that video being like, this isn't your voice. And I'm like, girl, why are you? What? It's me. I don't know. I'm not mad about it. I'm not. I'm not mad that people think that it was Orlando Brown. It's just, it's, it just turned into this thing. <laughs> like people get crazy on social they do. media. They do. They get very crazy. Very What's the crazy. craziest thing that's happened thus far for you? I mean, I mean, it's not funny, but the craziest thing thus far is the cover that I did of uh, I Am My Mother's Savage Daughter. Um, and it is a cover. I did not write it. I'm going to repeat that until the day that I die. Um, <laughs> the i i did it on social media uh, just a clip of it before i knew of the original artist so i did not tag her and so that's the receipt that people keep using about me not crediting her mm. appropriately mm -hmm. 
which I didn't because I didn't know the song. I didn't know who she was. After that song blew up, uh, it went viral. People were asking for like a legit like production of it. And I did research it. I found the original author. Uh, uh, she is uh, a member of the... Uh, I never do this right. I think... You know, I'm not going to say it because it's okay. I'm, I'm going okay. to get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so I, I found her. I, found, I, I noticed that there weren't any, like, studio recordings of the song. There was a video of her doing it live. Uh, she sells her original on Bandcamp. Um, and there was a couple of videos that were pretty well known of, like, her doing it with a choir in her community. So... I went through it, got this mechanical license, because that's all it takes to cover a song. You have to purchase a, a mechanical license, it's called, put the original author's name on it, find out who she copyrighted it through. I did this all through um, a platform called DistroKid. Yeah, so yeah. they did everything for me, and I paid them. And now the mechanical license allows BMI to take her cut of the proceeds if there are any right with streaming stuff the song was so popular it i it is now probably over five million streams all over the world oh my god all over the world and two months after i released it which going back a little bit i actually did it for a Mother's Day present and i put out a video and everything yeah i remember with, like, that it was great mom. And, and so i I did it primarily for um, Mother's Day, and so I, that's important for later in the story. The original author did not understand what was happening. Um, she just saw the music video, and she was like, oh, this person uh, is taking my song and crediting it as hers. And I never asked permission. I didn't. I don't legally have to ask permission as long as... I think that's an important thing to say. Like, you don't legally have to ask for no. permission. Uh, now I will never do a cover without asking permission because it was just such yeah. a sticky situation. Um, but she came out two, two months on Facebook, two months after I released the song, and claimed that I stole it. And, that I, and she said that, you know, uh, I didn't ask permission and she didn't have, I didn't have her permission and, uh, to disregard my cover because, uh, it is not mine. Um, and I never ever claimed that it was, and I will never claim that it was, but once it's out on social media, there's nothing you can do. It's just out there. Mm -hmm. And now it's been over two years since I put that out. I still, to this day, people commenting i'm a thief you're a liar um Oof. she did take that post down um and she put up she's never put up a retraction but she did put up a a bmi post saying if you would like to cop uh, if you would like to cover my song this is the copyright you have to go through bmi and blah blah but she's never come out and said and said sarah didn't steal it i am getting paid she's getting she's getting paid I, you know, I think it's tough because uh, people see all of the positive of social media, but you don't understand the responsibility that really does come with it when you blow up the way that you have. And um, there's just at the so end many of the day, people are going to believe what they want. Yeah, they and are. And, and I have made it a rule of mine that I'm not going to be in the comment sections fighting. I was going to say, well, I'm going to ask you, does it bother you? Um, because I say this as a compliment because I'm this way. Mm -hmm. You either luck, you love me or you hate me. There's, mm -hmm. I'm not an in-between kind of gal. Yeah. So I've just had to learn that I don't read anything because I'm sensitive and it hurts my feelings. So if I'm going to do what I do, I just don't read. I'm insecure. I have my things. I don't want to know. Have you gotten to a place where you just accept it for what it is? Does it still hurt you? Like, how do you take Oh, it definitely on? hurts me. Especially yeah. when people come at me. But because now... I'm now I'm dealing with an issue because uh, the patriarchy has won again and they are dividing women through this trans issue, biological women, cis women and uh, trans women mm -hmm. um, and biological women are being fed this information uh, that trans women are trying to erase them or uh, by using terms like 
breastfeed uh, f- uh, feeders or birthing person. And, it's, just, and it, it's so stupid to me because it's like, those aren't for you, babe. Nobody's erasing you. And, and again, it's the patriarchy winning. They want to divide us. They want to divide us because together we're stronger. Um, and so this is just another distraction of, uh, and we're half the population women. Yeah. So it's just another division that the society has created to put and they're and they're fucking winning. That's the most depressing part. But um, and so there were people using my cover of Savage Daughter to be outwardly transphobic. And so I came out and I stitched the video. Oh, shit. And I said, I don't approve of this. I know that I don't I can't stop it. But I want you to know that this is not what I believe in. So if you're you're using my voice, I'm not claiming it's my song, but, but it it's is your my voice. voice to push this hatred and bigoted message. I don't approve. And so if you're going to continue to do it, just know that I don't approve and you look stupid. So I put that out and that now is up to a million views, but not in a good way. I have now a vast amount of trolls trolling me on, you know, trans women aren't real women. You're, you're a traitor to your sex. You're standing up for, you're putting down real women and standing up for a man in a dress, you know, things like that. And it's, that hurts. It hurts a lot because it's mostly women. Mm-hmm. who are doing this i mean if they were listening right now and not that they are because that's not necessarily my fan base either but like what would you say to them if they were listening right now the ones that come for you like that because i i like to react because even in that video i reacted and um i reacted uh bitchily because that's who i am i'm a bitch and I, i'm unapologetic unapologetically a cunt on rarity. And so uh, when someone is using my voice to push hate, I basically, I said, I was like, women putting other women down is stank coochie energy. And this song, I believe, is for strong women, not little bitches. And so I said that in comic and fun. I love the term stank coochie energy. It's not mine. It's another uh, TikTok mutualist friend that I put music to and I love it. Yeah. Uh, So I use it all the time. The idea, because I am a true feminist and I don't believe women are perfect. I don't, I do believe women can be hurtful and hateful and bigoted and I'm not perfect. So uh, like in the true feminist form, women can be assholes. So I also like to say that I don't support women blindly just because they're women, but I will protect them till the day that I die. But supporting them, nah, some women are assholes. Yeah. I can be an asshole. So I put that out there and now uh, I have a lot of people coming back and being like, oh, you're calling a stank coochie and little bitches. You're putting down women, so you have a stink. And I, and I get it. I get what they're doing. I understand what they're doing. I was trying to make it a little bit uh, comical because that's what I do. Uh, but at the end of the day, I would say I'm sad. I'm sad that the patriarchy has won again in this scenario that they are dividing us over a topic that is not true. It's not real. Trans women are not out for women. Trans women are not a man in a dress. And if you ever met one, if you met a trans person, if you met them and knew that they were a person and that they have trauma and they're struggling with their identity and now because society is being more open and they can be more open, that they're healing and that they're people. And actually they share with us because now it's a, it's a woman's perspective from that side. It's more, more inclusive. If you think about it, trans woman is making women more whole, I believe. And so it's, I, I'm sad. I'm sad that it's another win for the patriarchy. 
Um, but uh, you know, I just wanted you to say that because I feel like I know you, I'm friends with you. I know where you stand and where your heart is. And I feel like oftentimes comedians and women with big, big voices, uh, we say things as a comedian would. You do stand up. That's the whole point. That's how you communicate. Mm -hmm. And so we can't have this line where sometimes it's okay for a comedian to say things in a comedian way. And then other times it's offensive, staying coochie energy offensive. Mm -hmm. Like your point has always been the same. And ultimately, you are still human. You are a woman and you just want equality and you just want women to feel safe. The truth is I've had countless women, countless interviews who do not feel safe walking down the street at nighttime. You can look at comments. There's thousands of threads of women making jokes about what they would do for one day if they were a man. Yeah. And the answers are hysterical and so sad yeah. and so real. Yeah. So I just wanted you to, to have the, the voice to be able to, to fucking say that. Well, I was talking to my boyfriend about it. Um, and it's, this has hit me really hard because I'm not a trans woman. So it's technically not my issue, but it's something that I, I feel very strongly about and they were using my voice. I wouldn't just come out if I wasn't involved. Cause again, it's not my space. It's not my, it's not my discussion. Um, I will stand and push trans voices over mine to, for them to talk about their stories, but this had something to do with me. And so that's why I got involved. Um, but, he, but I think that's such an answer because earlier today you said, I will not take on black women yeah. stances. I'm not a black woman. Mm -hmm. And you don't take on stances that you don't understand, but when they use your voice, that's different. Exactly. And I think anybody can relate to that. Yeah. If you're using my actual voice, mm -hmm. you recorded the song and the song is becoming an anthem for transphobia, you're going to say something. Yeah. That's not political. That's yeah. protecting yourself as a woman and as an artist yeah. and as the brand that you've created for over 30 years. Yeah. And I think any motherfucker can understand that. And it's so sad that it's mostly women because I want to be like, I want, you're, you're letting, you're letting them win. It's like you're, you're feeding straight into the exact agenda that they want. They're making you and I fight against each other, which I'm not fighting you, babe. I love you. I'm on your side, but like, I'm not just going to support you being bigoted bigoted like yeah. i'm not i'm just not gonna do it i mean listen i think that this is the perfect way to uh end um or begin pride season yeah you know we're in june happy pride by ha the way thank you mama thank you for joining me and it was really important to me we are obviously a comedy podcast um but when our community or when people are in trouble and it is right now such a big issue I just do, I'm so happy to have you on. I'm happy to have you on during Pride Month. Our community appreciates you. I know you're taking a lot of hits for us, unfortunately. Well, I mentioned this to you the other day, the idea that it's like someone said this to me and I am taking it to heart uh, that they say, because you are getting attacked for standing up for trans women and trans people, um, a, a trans person is getting a break from being trolled. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take that. I'm going to take it. I will, I'll take the trolling so they can get a break for a little second. It, they're, they're never going to have full peace because this it's not never, not right now, but I, I love that. And they, someone said, uh, DM'd me on Instagram and I was just like, I love that. And if I can, if I can offer a little bit of peace to someone who's usually just trolled just for existing, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Yeah. yeah. I, can, I can handle it. All right. Listen, on that note, will you take us um, into, I, you are such a queen at improv and putting pieces together. And I was waiting for you to have you on because I would be honored, honored. It would be a privilege if you would give me a little snippet of something that you could create for So Funny It Hurts the podcast, okay. the way you have done for three years on TikTok. Well, I, I don't, I, 
I'm not really great at, and this is how I write. This is how I. No, I, whip out your thesaurus. I Google <laughs> a word yeah. and I'm like, or a topic. And I'm just like, oh, this works. And so I just, I, I put up the thesaurus and synonyms for hurt. And I can't even remember what I did at the top of it. It's like, um, uh, so funny it hurts. So funny it hurts. Aching, hit, struck, aggravated, impaired, suffering, agonized, lacerated, tendered, battered, marred, and tortured, bleeding, mauled, wrapped, and bruised, and miffed, and whining, and buffeted, and nicked, and busted, and confused, and offended, and pain, and crushed, and pain, indignant, and slapped, and picked, and damaged, and scared, resentful, distressed, and sad, and stricken, and shot, and shook, so funny, it hurts. <laughs> oh my god, that was Chase, that might have to be the theme song. I don't know what kind of money we have to offer you here, but that was the best. I can make it work. You're the best. <laughs> really Listen just... to me. I she show the cat. She pulled out that thesaurus. Yeah, and used just... every word she found. So funny. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Let's, can we zoom it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. That was live, bitches. You didn't know you were going to get comedy and a show it's and music. Reading. Comedy is just Look reading. Look at you. Listen to me. It's, just it's you reading. Anybody else reading? You're like, what am I stuck in the first what, what grade? I, what, I, what are you illiterate? In What's happening? Right now? <laughs> Gross. You know, I would like to point something out. Is yeah. that at the top of the show, she said, yeah, I just, I'm not really that good at piano. You know, especially today. You know, Chase, drag her right now for filth. I, I, I was like, I, I don't know what I was no, expecting, but I wasn't. That was like some of the most talented piano. You can play and sing. Fuck you. <laughs> Chase, I'm not a Skeletist. pianist. It, it, and it's. Yes, you no, are. I'm really not because I. Okay, I'm a dueling piano bar player here in Las Vegas at New York, New York Bar at Times Square. And Why I can play across. Sing, by the way. Uh, I work there. Um, I, my shows are Friday. Sundays and Tuesdays. Okay. I'm there every week unless I'm on the road trying to do comedy. <laughs> Doing comedy. Doing comedy. Yes. Um, but I sit across from the most, some of the most talented piano players. I am just an entertainer that knows my circle of fifths. That's bit that I, I'm not a pianist. I would never call myself a pianist, but I learned how to play piano so I could accompany myself. That's it. Well, I would like to say, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that you cannot take a compliment to save your fucking life. All right. Talk about my look. Literally so upset. That. No, you I are. And you're hot. Yes. Don't. Listen, when she stood up, she was walking down the hall and I was like, okay, body bitch, let's go. <laughs> she has these leggings on. I was like, okay, yes, yes. <laughs> Um, I love you so much. I love you too. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for always being so supportive of whatever the fuck I'm doing. I love it's you. I think that you're right a star. Back to you. I think you're a star. Thank you. Th I really mean this. Jury should, Pride. Thank should, you. Should we kiss? French kiss. Yes. Thank you. Lisa, close your fucking eyes. This is my time. Zaddy. Listen, Zaddy. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't and and we don't know if we're gonna be using that word anymore. And Andrew We're gonna discuss this when we get home. We are gonna have an intimate <laughs> conversation, pillow talking. And then I have to call my dad and tell him that Sarah Hester Ross <laughs> thinks it's disgusting that older women call their fathers daddy. And I don't even know if I can continue this podcast anymore. Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. Don't listen to me. I love you. Thank I you for you everything you're doing. I know where your heart's at, and so do all of your fans. Thank the you. two point three fucking million of them. I love every single one of them. Love you, girl. Love you too. So Funny It Hurts is brought to you by Pacific West Injury Law. Got into an accident? Contact Pacific West Injury Law. Also, there's nothing better for your mental health than a great workout. And our episode is brought to you by Fit Club, the only place to be. It's so funny, it hurts.